Welcome back to another Saturday edition of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Earlier this morning, we sat down with incumbent Ward 1 Councillor Ward Sutherland. And today, actually two hours later, we are sitting down with his colleague from the council, which is Ward 8 Incumbent Councillor Evan Woolley. Evan, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. I got one quick thing on Ward Sutherland. So okay. Ward, Ward Sutherland and I sat beside each other in council chambers and uh, for, for actually even, even through the moves, like, so they used to move us, uh, they used to move us and Ward Sutherland sat beside me. And I mean, there's, there, there were a number of occasions in, in the terms that I, I literally uh, believe he was about to uh, wrap his hands around my neck and choke me out. Um, but I got to bug him here and Ward, Ward and I are di different politics, but, uh, but got along as best as can be, uh, for those eight years, but <laughs> never in the history of council has anybody ever formally asked to the clerks to move away from another member of council and so Ward Sutherland broke, broke that historic record by asking officially to move, to not have to sit beside me. <laughs> I, I, I love when politicians have their exit interviews and they're just so, so open about everything. <laughs> just willing to tell it as it is. Um, but oh, uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it real, Chris. <laughs> that's, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that because we need that in uh, today's age. And as you can imagine, you, you've seen it. You've been in the front rows of this. The last year has been quite interesting when it comes to politics. Um, but you have decided after eight years in the, uh, uh, the sort of the epicenter of politics in the city of Calgary to depart. Was it a tough decision for you? Um, I thought it would be, I thought it would be not the decision, but I thought as, as, as we, as this came to a close, I might second guess myself more. Um, but I haven't, I haven't really. Um, the decision was actually not that difficult. I, I, I mean, maybe, Maybe that sounds odd, but um, I never wanted to do this job um, for a long time. I, I, I was not I was not in it for 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 like uh, uh, I wasn't going to Drew Fair all this thing. Um, I and again, I have the greatest of respect to Drew as a close friend and, and people. Some people are cut out for that. I always bounced around in jobs a lot, not because I was uh, a terrible employee. <laughs> Maybe I was a terrible employee every once in a while, but um uh, I, I, throughout my career, I've wanted to, to, I, to I, I, I get antsy and eight years was a long time. Um, and it, 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 it was the right, it was the right, it was the right decision and the right, right amount of time in, in the gig. So. Before we start talking about legacy, because that's what you're here to talk about the last eight years, I want to talk about that faithful weekend before election day in 2013, when you, as the candidate, we're in a position like so many candidates are right now across the city who are trying to ensure that they have uh, approached enough voters, contact enough people, identified their supporters. What advice would you be given to candidates right now who are running in this last weekend before traditional election day? Uh, keep your uh, foot on the gas 100%. Um, keep your foot on the gas. Why this that? Uh, it comes. To, yeah, I, I never want. I, I never wanted to wake up after election day, in mean, either elections or, or any election, uh, and think if if only I had and, and have lost by like fifty votes. I always knew that that would really kill me, uh, which was the excuse that you can't you know leave on the table is is that uh, I could have worked harder, and um, uh, I, I never wanted to leave them. Did you go into that election because you were up against an incumbent? You were up against an incumbent. You were one of the few in that election that defeated an incumbent in 2013. Did you go into that last weekend thinking I could do this? Or was your mind so focused on, I, I don't care if I'm going to win this. I need to get out and identify as many voters as possible because this is a horse race. Because I, I hear from candidates yeah. in this election, oh, I've gotten it. It's in the bag. I don't need to do much work this last weekend. I'm going, What? <laughs> What candidate is telling you that? And whatever candidate is telling you that is probably going to lose. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, in 2013, uh, I, I just worked way harder uh, than the incumbent. And uh, 
we didn't have as much money, but we raised a good amount of money. And my name, uh, well, I was I was relatively unknown. I, I spent I was bo- literally born and raised in the ward. Spent my whole entire life in the ward, and so um, well, I wasn't didn't have the name recognition. Uh, I just I, we used my work ethic uh, to to do that. And I remember actually on the on the morning. So on the on the whole two weeks before the election, I would go to the train stations, go to C train stations because Ward Eight has like the most train the most C train stations. So we stood at C train station platforms uh, for the two weeks before. But then the final week, um, I made big carafes of coffee, and I went and gave out coffee at the underpasses uh, between the Beltline and the downtown. And and it takes ninety minutes to get a carafe of those big like percolator uh things of coffee and uh, i remember uh the last day i was on this i had a big bike and i put the co- all the coffee in the back of the bike and i'd bike it to one of the underpasses and i had this like very tiny incline and i started getting weepy i was like i was like on this bike and i was like i'm so tired i'm so tired it's just it's a lot of energy and these your democratic mandate as an elected official is derived by identifying people that will support you and and it's a it's a crazy game it's a crazy game crazy last week for the candidates so much work going into uh the most insane job interview process uh, ever known to man now Humanity most of most of the job is and I'm, we're, I, I apologize for sticking close to this whole uh uh, election night before the election okay. but it is important for the candidates who are listening to this because for some reason they seem to want to listen to these shows and yet again not go door knocking but hey listen to my show that's great um election day is is out of your hands you can identify as many voters as possible but on election day it comes down to the person going to the ballot boxes and actually voting and it's a secret ballot you have to put your trust into the people who you have identified to go in and vote for you how stressful Mm -hmm. was that as a candidate because you you never know right you can identify 80 percent of the population that they're going to vote for you but 40 percent is might only vote for you or you might only get one vote yourself if you vote for yourself yeah, I uh, I I I I I had a, a panic attack on election day, and I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital because I like I, had this, I literally thought I was having a heart attack, and my wife gave me my bike bike helmet. And she went uh, go for a bike ride and like smoke a cigarette. And so I went for a bike ride and sat on the side of the Elbow River and smoked a cigarette and chilled out. Uh, it worked. It worked. Um, so, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's an angst, it's an angstful, uh, many hours from, from being like, it's, it's actually in your hands, right? Like election day, it's not out of your hands. Election day is in your hands and it's your get out the vote. Um, but it's out of your hands come six o'clock, right? Six great. or seven o'clock. I want to talk about your time in politics now, because eight years is a long time in politics. A week is a long time in politics, and we're recording this a week before Election Day, so things could change still. But uh, I think uh, we are in a position where we kind of know where the chips are going to fall, but Election Day is Election Day, and here we are. Voter turnout seems to be high because advanced polling seems to be higher than the last two elections before that. When you got into politics, when you actually got that check mark beside your name on election night in 2013, what weight was put on your shoulders? Uh, I mean, at the, in the moment, it was quite a relief <laughs> because, uh, because I was employed and I could pay my mortgage. Uh, and, and people always get mad at me when I say that, but. Uh, you, you have to pay the mortgage and, 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 I, and I was lucky enough to, 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 to get paid over the last eight years for something that I've been deeply passionate about uh, for a lot of my life. Um, but yeah, the pressure's no joke. I mean, the pressure for me uh, came actually at a different point because when I was elected in October uh, uh, 2013, I think it was the 21st, um, oil was at 132 bucks a barrel and our GDP growth was like five points. And uh, uh, we were rocking and rolling. We were on a Calgary was on a rocket ship. Uh, the 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 pressure came uh, a couple of months later when the bottom fell out of uh, out of the energy sector market and uh, and um, a year or two later the it, that 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 knock on effect murdered our budget and 
that's when the pressure that that's when the heat came on which is the last you know this this tectonic economic shift well, uh, that gonna, we've gone through over the last seven years i was gonna say you, you have been in the position of a counselor during some of the most challenging moments in calgary's history covid19 economic collapse of the oil industry the downtown being decimated the flood recovery looking back on it could you have imagined in 2013 that this was going to happen and i know you're going to say no but how did you accomplish how did you get through every day because the weight of calgarians was on your shoulders to do the right thing and sometimes politicians might not make the right decision so how do you look at back at the last eight years and go you know what i did my best yeah, I mean, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I John Chrétien was uh, was epically good at going from from the campaign or play, doing, doing practicing politics, which you, you do throughout the terms, but then transitioning to government, right? Like, which is governance. And um, I'm a uh, I, I'm I'm a very logical and practical person, and I believe in evidence based decision making. And so I exercised. Uh, uh, I exercised that. I, I exercised my medium intelligence to surround myself with really smart people, and uh, I listened to them. And and you know, uh, the the incredible benefit that the city has, which is, well, property taxes are um, are a kind of a backward system. We have a relatively stable budget, right? Um, we do not have the throes of the provincial budget. And at the same time, we also uh, have had a lot of money in the piggy bank. Um, we, during the good times, we, we, we put a bunch of money away and that's smart. And so we, we were able to rely on that to draw down on reserves, even though our, actually our reserves are, are, are continue to, to remain very, very healthy, but um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I got a lot, look at, look at these crow's feet. Uh, it's stressful and it's hard work and it's, Hard work because also like keeping the lights on at City Hall, uh, you know, the, there's just a certain amount of like, you know, Ward Sutherland, Peter DeMong, uh, others who, who just like carry the load of the work, right? Like you, I'm, I'm, I was the chair of the audit committee. Uh, you don't get any votes by being on the audit committee for, for eight years and being the chair for six, right? Um, and that's the, the disappointing thing in, in, in this whole endeavor and we've seen it in, in, in America and we've seen it in Alberta and we, we particularly seen it on this council, which is the people that just practice politics uh, suck at doing the work and, 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 and it doesn't pay off, right? Like it doesn't pay uh, off or, or, or help anybody to do nothing but practice politics. And I think there's a confusion amongst some people that that's what you're supposed to do, but you have to chair the audit committee. You have to, you have to go to AUMA meetings. You have to do the work, and the the more counselors that we have, and we had enough, right? You you need you need seven or eight people to do all the work and, and have a decent mayor. But um, I, I think we 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 did a very good job. Uh, in my reflection on the last eight years, uh, this municipal government stewarded the city um, well. And anybody that says there's a waste of uh, uh, we waste money. And that there's all this fat at City Hall are are liars, and um, it's not true because our credit rating, our credit rating, it, it, it tells the story, right? Um, and so we remain in a good position. This next council is really going to have to uh, work hard to screw it up, right? I want to talk about the last eight years and I want to ask this poignant question because I think you just alluded to some of what you're going to say here, but I want to put this on the record. Looking back in the last eight years, what was the, what, what, what do you want your legacy to be when you leave on October, whatever date the new council is sworn in, what do you want people to look back and say, Evan Woolley did this for me and I'm proud that he was my counselor for the last eight years. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I've reflected on that, and, and, and there's a lot. There, there, it, I mean, this is like not a back slapping exercise, but we, we did a lot, and I'm actually really, really proud of, of the work that we did. We invested more money in parks in Ward 8 uh, in, in eight years than the last 40, right? Um, we invested a ton of money in infrastructure uh, to make our neighborhoods better, right? 
uh, you think of the the insane fight on cycle tracks, which again, some people I, I think is a big legacy of mine. Even though the irony of it is, is it's a five million dollar project, which is crazy because our annual capital budget is one point eight billion dollars last year, and a five million dollar uh, infrastructure project. Um, I, I'm really proud of uh, of the work that we did in downtown. That said, on my watch, downtown vacancy went from zero to thirty. Uh, I, I won't blame myself completely for that, but um, we've really, really set up, uh, uh, set up the future council, next council, uh, and, we, and we stewarded it as, as best as we could. And I'm, and I'm actually really proud of that. Um, we've made some crazy, crazy good decisions. And even on things like the arena, which I might not agree with, um, these are big projects that create tons of jobs and have lasting impact. We needed we needed a new convention center. We need a new arena. We're building the green line. Um, we're making these investments. Property taxes remain the lowest in the country. Um, we did a lot. While we can all pat ourselves on the back, looking back, there's always regret. There's always regret. You didn't push hard enough. You didn't do enough. You didn't do enough on this issue or that the file. For you, looking back on it, I've asked this to uh, uh, Councillor Sutherland as well, and he gave me his answer. But for you, what was what is the one regret? What was the one issue that you went? I wish it would have went a little bit differently for me on this one. Yeah, I I, uh, I didn't spend enough time uh, on climate change uh, as a municipality and um, leaning in on our participation as a municipality to to mitigate deal with uh lean in on 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 uh, on climate change and, and again i i, I there, there's lots of the, the the secondary and tertiary work of that which is building density which we built a lot of density in the last eight years uh transit um all of those things um uh, mobility uh investments and all those things that that, that help us as a municipality in the in the in, the, in, in participating in uh, reducing our impact on the on the on the climate but we didn't do enough this council was not that interested in the file um we did not really lean in hard enough and it's one of the things that i regret what advice would you give to the next council on that file to lean into it a little bit more or it, it i think it has to come from buy-in from the residents as well on this this issue because i talk to people and i've talked to candidates climate change is not an issue that i've heard uh, i think i've heard five people out of the candidates i've interviewed talk about climate yeah. change how do you what advice would you give uh well we i mean we have our own we have our own we have our own uh strategy we need to invest in the strategy right like you can you can have strategies all, all, all day long if you don't have an implementation plan and you don't have the resources for it it won't go anywhere so they need to put that uh if, if the next council believes in this they need to they need to put their money uh where their mouths are uh the other piece which is it's reputational um, and it connects to the to the province, and it's one of those things. Whether it's housing or a number of issues that again, and actually, climate change is 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 federal and international in nature. But it's one of those things that, as as a municipality, if the province does it do doesn't do it, we we need to do it, right? We there there are things that that as a city we would find so important uh, to our the health and well-being of our citizens that we will just do it and we'll lean in on those right we talk about the province downloading to us um that that, that is that is a, a physical and policy and, and and space that we need to move into if they don't one thing that i have uh, found and i'm relatively new to the city i moved here in 2020 i am not a born wow. raised calgarian like yourself but in 2019 sorry i apologize uh, october 2019 i moved here right before the pandemic so i've literally not been able to meet anyone except via zoom I find that the people of Calgary are apathetic when it comes to politics. And I, I this, this is just me being me. And uh, I think people are engaged, but they're still a part of the population that are think politicians and politics is not for them. How do we get people involved in politics? Because we have 40% of the population who didn't vote in the last election. How do we get more people involved in politics? I, I see the amount of candidates who have come out of the woodworks to run this election, which is great. But candidates and voters are two different things. How do we get people voting on election day? Um, you know, I, I'm less cynical. And, and, and I guess I would ask you, like, is that just a vibe you get? The, the Calgarians are, are, are generally apathetic. 
Like, do you I've know talked, that as fa- I, I've talked down, and this is just in my neighborhood of Ward 10. I've walked down my street and I've talked to my neighbors when I'm going to get my mail. And I asked them, uh, have you made a decision on the election? And they're like, what election? They don't know that an election is happening. And we, I know communications is a big thing for the city of Calgary and mm-hmm. you send out the flyers, I get them, but people just aren't tuned into this election and they could be wrong. And I want to know from you, do, yeah. you, do you disagree with that statement? Uh, I, I guess maybe I'm like more more hopeful that people are quite leaned in. Uh, I guess it, it, it depends on what voter turnout is. Um, I, I asked this of our returning officer, what is our target? So, so in, in most of the business units across the city, we have, a, we have a budget cycle with targets of things that we want to meet. Buses need to run 90% on time, all sorts of targets that we need, 100% safe drinking water uh, and those things. We have no targets for election, for, for voter turnout. Um, we kind of run elections the same way we always have. We make it really, really easy for older people to vote. We make it very, very difficult for young people to vote. And then we say, uh, oh yeah, well, young people don't vote because they're disenfranchised and they don't care. Um, it's really interesting looking at uh, vaccination rates um, in terms of how the strategies that we used to get people vaccinated and, 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 and frankly, at first, our vaccination uh, uh, strategy was uh, making it really, really easy for um, people of privilege to vote and very, very difficult for the working class uh, and poor and marginalized people and young people to get vaccinated. And the same could be said of our elections, which is our elections are set up to make it difficult for younger people to vote and marginalized people to vote and working people to vote. We make it really, really easy for, for, for people of privilege and means to vote. And so that's why the system spits out moi <laughs> and others. Um, and we need to do a better job and we do, because we don't do a good enough job. I, I, I asked the returning officer when, when, they, when they made a decision not to have advanced polling stations at universities. Uh, is this election going to be more accessible than the last election? And uh, I think we have a lot of work to do that. And then, and then the structural pieces, which is uh, in elementary school, we don't teach civics, right? And in high school, we don't teach civics. You have to memorize the map of the United States. You have to memorize all the states in the United States, but you don't learn about how water uh, is treated uh, so that you can drink the best water in the world. And we have to do a better job of that. I agree wholeheartedly on that one, Councillor. Thank you for stating that. I, I want to talk about the future now. Uh, you have, uh, I, I think I can say this, it was on your Twitter feed, so I'm assuming it's public knowledge, but you have mm. made an endorsement for your replacement. Mm. You came out and yeah. endorsed Courtney Walcott, uh, a teacher from uh, Ward 8, to replace you as city councillor. Um, sometimes that can be a double-edged sword, uh, but you made that decision because sometimes people may say, uh, politicians need to stay out of endorsements, so on and so forth. Iverson took a massive hit in Edmonton for doing this, but you are one person. I want to know from me, I want to know, why, why Courtney? Why do you believe that Courtney should replace you? Um, I, 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 as people, as I'm leaving, people are like, oh, what are we going to do? You're, you know, you're leaving. Oh my God. As some people probably are like, don't let the door hit you on, on the way out. But, um, uh, when I look at Courtney, I see the future, right? When I look at what Courtney talks about, when I look at what Courtney looks like, um, uh, when I see Courtney's energy and my depleting, uh, energy for this, for this role, not for other things, uh, I see the future in Courtney. And uh, when I look at the other candidates across, across the field in Ward 8, um, it's a hurting unit. Uh, it's the same tired, exhausted slogans. It's, um, the, it, it's fear and it's anger and it's people capitalizing on that. And it's, it, it's, it's, tired, uh, it's tired ideas. And, and um, and I've worked too hard in the, in the last eight years in the constituencies, uh, everybody, but, 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 but the constituencies and, and uh, networks of people um, uh, that supported me in the work that we did. I don't want to see that lost. I don't want to see that lost. And uh, 
Courtney's that guy and then some. While uh, that is one position, there are a few other elections happening. And I, I've got to ask the question because I've asked it to Ward. I've asked it to a certain uh, a certain person who's showing up tomorrow on the show. But have you made your decisions on mayor, Senate, uh, plebiscides, uh, fluoridation, uh, I'm just school board trustees? Is there any other yeah, yeah. Or endorsements that you want to throw out here today? <laughs> Vote yes for fluoride. <laughs> Don't be silly. Vote to put fluoride in the water. It's not a it's not a global conspiracy. Um, I voted no for uh, daylight savings time uh, because I like that once a year that you get an extra hour of sleep, uh, lest you forget about the time that you lose an hour of sleep. Um, uh, and, and, and the rest, I'm going to. Uh, uh, keep close to my chest. Um, I think uh, the mayoral candidates are, are who they are. Um, their, their, their policies and their history and their platforms are there for everybody to read. And I think that people need to think uh, hard and they need to do the work. Um, they need to do the work on the candidates. Um, the, the, the front runners um, have been in the newspaper uh over the year and um they, they, they they've got a record and people need to look at the record um don't don't vote emotively uh vote with your head and and your heart um yeah that's all i have to say about that looking at the field of candidates looking at the state the slate of candidates school boards ward eight mayor do you have hope for the city that we're going to overcome that we're going to get through this COVID 19 pandemic yeah I, I i i absolutely do i mean the the wonderful thing um and for those who are nervous and i'm optimistic uh, I'm optimistic. I'm worried about the future of our city. Our, our future is bright if we choose it, but I'm worried. Uh, but I'm also optimistic. And I'm optimistic for, for one reason. And, and uh, uh, it's that if it's a really bad council, what, whatever you classify as bad, and if it's a really bad mayor, um, they won't do very much, right? Uh, we have a highly professionalized bureaucracy. The job is not rocket science. Uh, for the most part, we build stuff and we, we shovel the roads uh, mostly well, um, and we run buses, and we pick up your garbage, and we make sure your water's clean. And it's pretty hard to fuck that up. Um, uh, and so I think our bureaucracy, um, our, our, our highly professionalized bureaucracy, will do that work if it's a council that doesn't, right? Um, how much budget can you slash? um uh, to really mess things up um if you don't want to spend money and you don't want to make investments we lose on the reputation side and we lose time right we lose time and we don't we do have lots of it but we don't right we're competing uh with cities across the world but I i'm hopeful um second last question before we wrap up here counselor um we are heading to the polls in 48 hours. Uh, Monday morning, eight o'clock, polls open for the 2021 uh, uh, municipal election. Why should people get out and vote? Um, I mean, because, because it's your job. It's your job to vote as a citizen. Um, I, it's, it's, I, I always just find that like a bit of a non-starter. I grew up in a, in a family where like that was the, the that, that just voting was the basics. Um, and uh, it's your job to vote as a citizen. Uh, I, I, I hate the line taxpayer. I hate the, the, the idea of, of the taxpayer um, because we're citizens, uh, which means that this is a reciprocal relationship. And uh, if you don't, well, you know, good for you. I, I guess I, I don't have tons of time or patience for people that are like, eh, I, 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 I have, I, I worry that those who, who vote couldn't um, and wanted to, and we didn't make it accessible. But for those that just choose not to, because their favorite television show is uh, on or whatever, um, I don't have a lot of time for that. 
I, I will say this. Uh, if you do not vote, do not complain on social media because oh. I will ignore you and I will just lambast you for the next four years. If you do not vote, <laughs> no, you do not have a no. voice. Um, and I, I will say this. As someone who is battling cancer, who had someone show up at his door on Thursday with a gun and point it directly at my face, wow. I'm going to vote on Monday. I am going to vote and no one can scare me out of the, my democratic right to vote. And it's going to be challenging for me because I have PTSD and I can't leave this house right now, but wow. please, for the love wow. of God, vote. Sorry. I, I, I hope you called the police and I hope everything's okay. Uh, they arrived in five minutes. So wow. I, I appreciate the police and the that's, Calgary that's police. what your property taxes do. Thank you. To five minutes cops services. coming to your house. Yeah. Um, the defund the police movement. I know I'm going to get in trouble for this right now, but let's let's give our head a shake. We need our police service. So there's my there's my two minute rant. Um, Councillor, we'll need an hour question. to work. We'll need an hour to work, work through that one, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Last question before we wrap up. What's next? What what's next for you? What happens on October nineteenth for you? You're just gonna relax. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I, I, uh, I work, I was a hard worker, um, and a busy guy before politics. <laughs> it's not like this job, this job, uh, got me to work, but, uh, I'm exploring a whole bunch of opportunities. I, um, um, I don't have a job, uh, uh, as of, as, as of this minute, there's lots of, there's lots of, uh, um, ethical rules around, around that process, but I'm going through, I'm going through a process. I I've learned a lot in this job and I'm looking forward to taking some of the skills that I learned here, uh, into the private sector. Um, but I'm also really, really keen to continue to, to be involved in the community that, uh, that I have been uh, my whole life, um, just in a different way. Awesome. Um, well, Councillor Evan Woolley, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for the last year, eight years of service to the city. And, uh, I, I look forward to seeing what you, what's next on your agenda, but, uh, for everyone here at the Crossword Interview Podcast, thank you so much for tuning in, listening, uh, greatly appreciate it. And we will be back here eight o'clock with our last guest who is city of Calgary's mayor. Nahid Nenshi is on the show. So thank you so much, uh, Evan. Greatly appreciate it. Th thanks very much, Chris. Thanks for taking the time. And thanks uh, to all your viewers, listeners. Um, get out and vote.